listening to the Metal Command Podcast. Greetings, everybody. Welcome back to the Metal Command Podcast. Tony here with you, and I'm here to talk about the new Mick Mars album entitled The Other Side of Mars. Folks, I'm really shocked. I'm really shocked at how good this album is. I was not expecting Mick Mars to put out a solo album like this that's this good. I'll get into Motley Crue here in a minute, but Motley Crue has been an embarrassment live on stage for a few years now. Mick Mars is obviously not in that band anymore. He leaves the embarrassment of what Motley Crue has become live and goes and puts a solo album out that is probably one of the most well-written albums I've ever heard. Seriously, great songwriting. When I heard the first song, the first single, I was like, Mick Mars put this out? The same Mick Mars going on stage with Motley Crue while they embarrass themselves in front of, you know, hundreds and thousands of people? I can, you know, I could see why he left. I mean, Motley Crue's an embarrassment. And obviously, listening to this album, Mick Mars was definitely not the problem. But I'm going to talk about that here in a second. Let me get into this album. I'd probably describe it as a kind of a more modern sounding metal album. Definitely has a lot of catchy hooks, catchy melodies, uh, great songs. I mean, Loyal to the Lie, probably the first track is probably one of my favorites. A uh, Right Side of Wrong is a phenomenal track. Ain't Going Back is a phenomenal track. I mean, realistically, I think I only really didn't like one song on this album. I think the song... Uh, Killing Breed. I thought it was okay. I th- that might be my least favorite song on the album, but man, Mick Mars. You know, when I and, and I look at Motley Crue, I look at the body of work that they have done. You know, obviously, at one point, they were one of the top bands live that you could go see, especially in the 80s. And when I think of Motley Crue and I think of what Mick Mars has done in the past, you know, Dr. Feelgood, probably my favorite album. I like the first two albums. Girls, 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 you know, that album I didn't care for. Theater of Pain, I think it's called. Didn't care for that album. The self-titled album with John Karabi was a great record, very underrated. And Saints of Los Angeles is okay. But other than the five records I really kind of like by them, I think the rest of what they put out has been pretty much terrible. I did like the 6 a.m. stuff. I think DJ Ashby had a lot to do with how great those records were. But, you know, a lot of people have been bagging on Nikki Six. I'll get to that later. But I think him and DJ Ashby and that band, I I think they did a tremendous job on those those 6 a.m. albums. In fact, I like most of the stuff that 6 a.m. put out. Good stuff. Very well written, very well crafted songs on, on those records. But man, Mick Mars has really done a phenomenal job with this solo album. I cannot say that enough. And as much of a Motley Crue fan that I am not, you know, because I don't really consider, I mean, I like some albums, but am I going to go listen? To, I probably haven't listened to an, a, a Motley Crue album all the way through since Saints of Los Angeles came out. And that probably came out 08 or 09. So with that said, Let's talk about Motley Crue for a minute. Folks, has there been a band that's been any more embarrassing than these guys? I mean, they've done, what, eight comeback tours now? I don't. I, I lost count. It's like they said they were going to retire, and then they just keep coming back. It's like the comeback tours lasted 10, 15, 20 years, whatever it is, right? Mick Mars leaves. The band kind of you know bashes them on the way out. Obviously, clearly, he was not the problem in that band if he puts out music like he just did. But Motley Crue is an embarrassment. You have people out there accusing Nikki Six of not really playing his bass and using backing tracks. I've seen that all over the internet. I don't know how true it is. I don't care enough about them to really look into it. 
but he has that accusation going at him. People saying he never played his bass parts on some of the albums. Vince Neil is also a complete embarrassment. Not only does he embarrass the rest of the band, but he embarrasses himself. Have you seen him live? Most of you have probably heard the videos or saw the videos of him singing. He can't, he's about 50 to 100 pounds overweight. He can barely catch his breath to be able to enunciate the words properly. He kind of slurs his words when he's on stage. I mean, the guy is terrible. But they draw people. But it's really sad what that band has become. Because at one point in their career, they were on top of their game. They, they were as good as anybody back in the 80s as far as a live show is concerned. Vince Neil. He didn't, he doesn't, he's never really had a great voice, but I say this same thing about David Lee Roth. David Lee Roth, not a great voice, but a phenomenal showman. Vince Neil, back in his day, in his prime, had an unbelievable stage presence. Folks, he doesn't have that anymore. The guy can barely get around stage. It can barely even you know, catch his breath to be able to sing the songs the way that he would have 30 years ago. It sounds horrible. There are some people out there that feel bad for him. I don't. Because, bro, you let yourself go. When someone lets themselves get into that bad of shape, That's on them. And it's honestly very sad that Motley Crue goes out and plays live shows and looks that bad. I mean, Tommy Lee looks good. I mean, he's still a pretty good drummer. He's probably the best thing in that band right now. I mean, I don't know much about John Five. Never really cared about him. I'm sure he does a pretty good job playing the songs. But Vince being the front man embarrasses that band. And it's sad. It is really sad that he let himself go the way that he did. And he goes on stage and basically embarrasses himself and embarrasses the band. And what's even more sad about it is there are people that pay a lot of money to go see that. Now you got to think to yourself, okay, does Vince, you know, should Vince stop? He should stop. I mean, if he's getting paid a lot of money, more power to him. But but man, he makes this band is an embarrassment. And what's even more embarrassing is that Mick Mars leaves Motley Crue and puts out a solo album that pretty much wipes the floor with anything Motley Crue's done over the last like 30 years. very clear to see who the real problem is and it's not mick at his age in his career to put out records like that it is unbelievable but motley crew is an embarrassment i don't blame him for leaving i mean there comes a point where money, I mean, you might get paid a lot of money, but man, do I want to get paid the amount of money they do to, that they that that they're getting to embarrass myself? I'd probably debate that. I mean, when you have people making videos, and when Vince Neil can't pronounce the words correctly, and they're just making their own captions of what the words actually sound like instead of what they are, or the memes where they show Vince Neil as Vince Neil as the abominable snowman from Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and they call him Vince Meal 
or the King Kong Photoshop meme where they show Vince on the top of the tower going after the airplanes. He has nobody to blame but himself when it comes to that. And it's sad. Vince Neal at one point in his career was one of the best front men in hard rock and heavy metal. And I actually liked one of his solo albums. There was a solo album. I don't remember which one it was, but it was actually pretty good. But man, it is an embarrassment. I'll tell you what, if I sang like that, I, I, wouldn't, even, I wouldn't even leave my house. I would be embarrassed. I would drop 50 to 100 pounds. I would get myself with a personal trainer. And I would get myself back into shape to be able to sing the way I used to be able to sing. He doesn't have a crazy vocal range. It's not like, I mean, it's not like he needs to sing like Rob Halford. He doesn't sing like that. But if that dude got himself in much better shape than having the giant beer gut sticking out, running out of breath on stage, not being able to enunciate words because you're trying to breathe, that is pathetic and it is sad. And as I said before, it's even more sad that people would pay to go see this band in concert. Props to McMars, folks. I, I, I have nothing but positive things to say about Mick Mars and what he has done on this solo album. I can see why he would leave that embarrassment and go and make this record. Album of the Year candidate right there. Never thought I would say a member of Motley Crue put a record out that would be in that conversation but it's a possible album of the year candidate. The more I listen to the album, the more I like it. And obviously a clear majority of you like it as well. So with that said, thanks for watching folks. Hit the subscribe button. If you're watching this on YouTube or give the Facebook page a follow. Thanks for watching. Stay metal.